Hi, I'm Bill Torgerson, author of Love on the Big Screen. I want to welcome people to AnitaBook.com and also welcome the Carrollton, uh, Georgia Pulpwood Queens Book Club. I met uh, Anita down in Jefferson, Texas at the Pulpwood Queens Girlfriend Weekend and so I had a great time visiting with her. We ended up uh, staying at the same bed and breakfast and so we uh, had breakfast at least one morning together and been in touch ever since. I uh, have kind of a neat picture uh, taken by photographer Natalie Brasington of uh, Brooklyn uh, of Anita getting her book signed by John Barrett. Uh, John is uh, one of my favorite authors who wrote a great book uh, called Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil that spent something like over 200 weeks on the New York Times bestseller. Uh, and I came to uh, that story because of John Cusack and the movies uh, of the 80s, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, Love on the Big Screen is a Pulpwood Queen May bonus book club selection. Uh, so thanks to Kathy Patrick and the Pulpwood Queens uh, for that. It's a novel that tells the story of a college freshman whose understanding of love has been shaped by late 80s romantic comedies. Uh, I'm a high school graduate uh, in 1989, and so I grew up on movies like uh, Say Anything or the John Hughes movies like Sixteen Candles or The Breakfast Club, uh, even when Harry met Sally, Dead Poets Society, some of my favorite films uh, growing up. You don't have to uh, know those movies uh, to enjoy the book. Um, first, let me tell you a little bit about the first sentences. I'm a uh, professor at St. John's University in the Institute for Writing Studies uh, in New York City. And so um, I believe that I should be writing along with my students. And I think we were working on openings, opening of paragraphs, opening of stories, uh, in my case, opening of novels. And the sentence that I wrote was, everything Zook knew about love, he knew from the movies, most of them late 80s romantic comedies. And so I was just sort of free writing with my students in what a guy named Donald Murray uh, would have called a day book. You can think writer's notebook or uh, maybe even journal. And so I wrote that sentence and I knew that there was a lot there uh, that interested me. Um, and so Zook, the protagonist of this novel, uh, is the, he's a basketball player. Uh, he's in composition class, which is a class I teach now. Uh, and he sees a girl that he likes and that he immediately thinks he loves. Um, and so he declares himself an English major just to be around uh, this young lady named Abby Grant. And so one of the things that I was really trying to do with the novel, um, I was trying to move Zook from a place where he was, uh, where he had an overly romantic view of love uh, to a place where he had a more reality-based view of love. Um, and so what can happen to Zook in the process of thinking that he loves Abby Grant uh, actually um, figuring out a way to date her, to be around her, and then as he begins to experience real relationships, um, how does his sort of fantasy idea of what it means to be in love uh, change? Uh, I wanted to mention a little bit, I do have some Georgia connections, and I know that some of you are in Georgia. This is the uh, cover of the novel, and this theater um, is located in Milledgeville, Georgia, and so it's a renovated, renovated theater uh, that is now a, a bookstore and a space for uh, performance space and uh, so thanks to Georgia College for um, hooking me up with the image that ended up becoming the cover. I have an MFA degree from Georgia College specializing in fiction and so it was quite an adventure for my wife and I when we went down uh, to Milledgeville. I'd been teaching for about 10 years in Indiana and North Carolina and we were pregnant with our first daughter and uh, we weren't quite sure how we were going to uh, swing that, but my wife ended up being a resident director of a residence hall, uh, all freshmen, and so that turned out to be a blessing to sort of uh, have those experiences to draw on as I tried to remember uh, what it was like to live in a dorm uh, and write Love on the Big Screen. As far as where does this book come from, um, it comes from my own interest, uh, it comes from my own way of thinking about love, and I'm not quite sure um, where that, if we're programmed for that or where that comes from. I remember being a third grader. Uh, being the kind of guy, kid in the third grade where I'd walk in as a new student uh, and I saw a girl that I thought I loved right away or had a crush on, whatever you want to call it, in the third grade and lo and behold that girl uh, sent, me, sent me a note that said, do you want to be my boyfriend, yes or no? And, and I just wasn't the kind of person who could check yes. I would throw that note away 
And as soon as it was gone, I would start wanting uh, her to write me again. Uh, and of course, eventually she wouldn't. And so sort of starting that way in the third grade, which certainly was not influenced by the movies, but that's just the kind of kid uh, that I was. And then I grew up uh, watching John Cusack in a lot of films, like Say Anything. Uh, also being interested in films like Sixteen Candles or When Harry Met Sally. Um, a lot of the John Hughes films. Uh, and so moving into college, uh, the book certainly draws on some of my own real life experiences. I went to a conservative Christian college where among the rules was that the girls couldn't visit uh, the men in the residence hall and vice versa. And so that meant that I spent a lot of time uh, sitting around with my buddies talking about girls that we had maybe talked to. Uh, we all said that we had to have a her, which meant uh, someone that we wanted to date. And so we would have two or three girls maybe that we uh, wanted to date. We did form a club called the Brothers in Pursuit and we bought matching boxer shorts and we bought uh, plastic medieval helmets from Toys R Us and we had weekly meetings of the Brothers in Pursuit. We were in pursuit of women, God, knowledge, and truth and so we would report back uh, on how we were doing on those pursuits and then I got married young and divorced within three years, so that was a very difficult uh, experience that left me kind of uh, dazed about how love might work. I, in fact, promised myself that I would never uh, get married again, but um, eventually I met my wife, now Megan, who was so great that it caused me uh, to change my mind on my previous promise. And so I think part of what I was trying to do was to give Zook, uh, Zook learn some things and figure some things out in about a year and a half that took me more like 10 or 15 years to figure. So as far as what you might look for in the book, there's there's that Zook likes Abby, and then he tries to manipulate uh, his life and his major uh, to be around her so that they might date. Uh, some other women come into the picture. Uh, there's also uh, Zook and his buddies who have their own relationships. Um, there is a black uh, player on the basketball team who's Zook's friend, Flabby, uh, who begins to date uh, a white girl, and their families uh, have some trouble with that, there's a character named Peroni who um, may not quite be what he uh, appears. And there's a homosexual character uh, that the guys call the Dini. And so um, it's complex for the Dini to be homosexual and a Christian and to think through that and also be in that setting, uh, interacting with the people who attend a school, uh, like Pison, which is the name I gave all of it Nazarene University in the book. So those are all be some things that might be interesting for us to talk about. Uh, it stinks to be a writer with no connection to an audience. So Anita and I talked about the possibility of her collecting some questions. And maybe, uh, I'm from Indiana, so maybe I can do kind of a David Letterman, who's also from Indiana, uh, viewer mail kind of thing, where maybe uh, Anita collects the questions and I read those and we sort of have a discussion via uh, video or email or Facebook. Um, so you can find me at thetorg.com. Uh, I've got a website, or I've got my email, there and I tweet and so there's lots of ways for us to get in touch. It would be awesome to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.